What is up, beautiful people? It's Mizgo here. Now, five weeks ago, on August 26th, this was a special day. This was when I quietly released my Figma Masterclass course to the public. Since then, we've had over 958 students take on the course, 80 of them have already graduated, and over 20 of them have left feedback through our course feedback form. Now, I am so happy, appreciative, and grateful to hear that we received a 4.85 out of 5 for this course itself. Now, what makes it so special to me is that I have seen students actively share and tell their friends about this course, which has helped us nearly hit the 1,000 student mark within four weeks. Now, you're probably thinking, Mizco, do I really need a course to learn how to use Figma? Well, to be honest, no. Anyone can grab a rectangle, grab a frame, build a component, build a variant inside Figma, and I've taught all that for free on YouTube. But if you want to accelerate your learning, deepen your understanding in UI design, and learn how to master Figma from start to end, from building a design system to get preparing it for developer handover, then this is the course for you. So let's jump right into the curriculum to help you better understand what's in this course and whether or not it is the right course for you. So let's jump right into it, guys. Now, once you get access to the course, you will also get access to the community as well. So if I show you over here, we've got a couple of hundred students already inside the, um, the community. And if I pop into the ask the questions section, we have people asking questions, helping each other out, which is something that I have really enjoyed seeing because students are actively popping in and actually helping one another. So if we just jump into move a project, um, asked by Lazar, you can see Julian has popped in to, and Amar has also popped in to help them out. And it's just a great place to get everything solved. So now back into the curriculum, let's understand, and I wanna help you understand how is this course actually structured and designed. So I understand that a lot of tutorials online, they teach concepts in an isolated way. So I have specifically designed this course to cascade down. And what does that mean? So everything that you learn and that you build in a chapter cascades down. It is reused and reutilized in the following section. So let's just jump into a few videos to help you understand what is actually in this course. So as you remember, chapter two is all about file management. So if we pop into the mood board section, you can see that, let's just turn this up, the quality up to 180 so you can see what's inside. You can see that in this video or in, in, the, in this series of videos about project management, you will get access to a well-documented uh, template, right, template file that I have created so you can plug and play this inside the project or into future projects as well. You can see on the left-hand side, this is how I managed my entire workflow within Figma with step-by-step -step processes for design feedback, documenting designs, managing components, managing the final designs. I have all that in place and I'll walk you guys through step-by-step -step on how to do that through this chapter. And as we sort of breeze right through this video, and let me just quickly go scroll through, you can see that as I'm clicking into these components or these elements in this template that I have created for you, on the right hand side, these are components that you can manage and also modify to suit your own needs. But this reflects how I generally present work. So if I have a mood board, I wanna be able to document things as inspiration for general usage, and I've created these specific types and or tags, if you will, for you to change and flick through. I've also got a toggle for images. So if you wanna to toggle things off and on, you can simply do that. And I've already got this built out for you. So if you access this course, you get access to all these templates. And you, as I scroll right through, you can pretty much see that this whole mood board section is responsive. And I'll walk you guys through how to utilize it um, and how I utilize it for specific projects as well. So all this is uh, comes with the course. Now, if we, once you understand how to manage your project from start to finish, we talk about the overview, how to manage your mood boards, how to manage your final designs, your feedback and your implementation, then we actually start into going to the practical stage, which is, all right, so you've got a new project, how do you start? So you obviously wanna start building some of the fundamental foundations for your project, which is the design system or the style guide, if you will. Now, we cover a lot of different things from for how to utilize the four point grid, how to actually build responsive grid layouts for all different viewports. But more importantly, I actually teach you how to fish, which is something that I talked about before. So if I click onto this video, the BEM model and component matrix, 
what I want to help you understand is that, yes, I have covered a lot on YouTube, but there's also a lot of things that I have not covered as well. And there's a lot of things that I don't go into detail into YouTube, mainly because there's just so much to talk about. So for example, in design systems, what I talk about is the Ben model and a component matrix, which is a thought process or a framework, if you will, that I utilize when I'm thinking about managing components. So the BEM model is also a front-end development naming convention framework. So if I flick through, you see that I talk a little bit about code, how front-end developers sort of build components, how they name their components, and I try to teach you this so you can then take these understandings and learnings into what you do, which is to design components. So you can see that we take some of those naming convention frameworks that developers use, and we utilize that to planning and building components. Now, the, what I'm trying to teach you is a more structured way to becoming a UI designer. So anyone, like I said before, can jump into Figma and make a component. That's simple. This course is a structured way of doing and achieving all this so you can become a more advanced UI designer but also a more knowledgeable UI designer. So to help you with these frameworks and systems so you can work faster in the long run. So you can see that I teach a lot of these concepts and then we pretty much go ahead and build imports, we build um, dark mode color palette, we build some topography scales for responsiveness. And we go ahead and build some input components with lots of different variants as well. So if we pop into this, you can see that we go ahead and build quite a few different variations and you do this step by step with what I have taught you in the course. Now, once you've built your design system and it's all prepared and you've published it, we then take all those components and all those elements into a real world project. We design a responsive layout. As you can see, what Justin has, uh, has shown us over here, we build this in this chapter step by step utilizing only the components that we have made so you can see how everything cascades from one to the other now once again inside the master the responsive design chapter i jump straight into code i walk you guys through some of those key and most important understandings in the front end development world so you can become a better ui designer it's so important for UI designers to understand what happens in code because that is what your designs actually end up in. It ends up being developed by UI developers. So I'm not here to tell you that you need to become a developer or you need to know how to write code. I'm here to show you and pull out the most important concepts so you can keep them in mind while you are designing, which means that you will become a better UI designer. So we talk about the box model. I also talk about Flexbox in detail as well, and I'm sh literally writing code to help you understand all that step by step. And as you can see, we can, in the code as well, I also reference the different features inside Figma that is replicating code inside the browser so you can truly map up step by step on what is happening in the actual code itself. So once you take, once you understand all that, we then go ahead and build that responsive layout. Now, once you understand all that, we then go into a chapter which is dedicated to ma uh, managing Figma components. And something to uh, take note is that I cover the concept of like global and local components, right? So once again, everyone can create a component, but when you start to build out a project and the project gets quite large, how do you actually manage all those components? When do they sit inside the same file as the design? When do they sit off in their own separate design system? So this is something that I talk about in the course because this is what's important when you start to work on real world projects and I'm trying to cover all this inside the Figma course. Now, once you've understood and really learned how to manage all the component stage of Figma, then what happens when you go into design implementation? What happens when you're ready to hand this over to developers? So that is where we cover how to export your images, how to compress your images. What are the things that you need to look out for? How do you document your designs for developers? So if I click into this video, you can see as I scroll right through, we talk about the different types of notes you should be considering when you are leaving notes for developers. How do you leave our notes for developers? And also where do you reference things when you need to show them a real prototype or a real development uh, project so they can actually understand what you're trying to say right so I cover all this inside this course uh, inside this chapter as well 
Now, at the end, you've got some bonus challenges, which are just some fun little exercises that I thought I'd wrap the course up with. Now, on top of all this, there is already another chapter that's in the works and will be released by the end of this year, which covers animations and also prototyping. In this chapter as well, we're gonna be designing UI from scratch with everything that you've learned. Everything will be reutilized from the chapters that you've already gone through. So we'll be utilizing elements from the actual design system. We're actually gonna be utilizing those components, but we'll be designing something entirely from scratch. And then we're gonna go ahead and link it up. We're gonna create those animations, create those interactions, so you learn and understand how to present work for your stakeholders to get a better idea about how the product actually moves around. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of what's actually inside the course so you can make a better assessment on is this course right for you. Now once again, if you want to learn more about what others have had to say, you can head over to the designship.com website. There are plenty of references on LinkedIn. People have tagged the designership so you can feel free to go to our company page and see what the students have said because we've reshared them on our page. And I really do hope that this video does give you that little bit more clarity on what's exactly inside and how this might be able to help you. Now, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. I am more than happy to answer them for you guys. All right, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video very soon.